Okay, hello Cloud Gurus, how y'all doing? My name is Scott Pletcher, pop quiz hotshot. Did you know that there were over 200 specialized machine learning algorithms and models ready and waiting for you on the AWS Marketplace? Many are available for free or with a free trial. Did you know that you yourself could monetize your own brilliant machine learning model right on the AWS Marketplace? Do you know why I keep asking rhetorical questions designed specifically to lure you in and pique your interest? Neither do I, but you can thank Papa Pletcher for bringing the goods on this ACG project. Today we're talking machine learning and AWS Marketplace, and I'm going to show you how to deploy algorithms and models available on the Marketplace. Plus, I'm giving you permission to buy that new Tesla because you're going to be rolling in the cash when I show you how you can get paid for your own machine learning models on the AWS Marketplace. So my friend, let's go make it rain. Okay, hello Cloud Gurus, how y'all doing? My name is Scott Pletcher, and I am going to share with you today my implementation of an angry ferret detector. In this project, we're gonna go over how to use SageMaker and the resources in the AWS Marketplace, specifically algorithms and models. And we're also gonna go over how to publish our own model to the Marketplace. And then bonus material, I'm gonna show you how I developed the model that I published. But first, let me orient you to the real problem. And it's something I call the great ferret menace. Now, sure, ferrets are cute and playful and innocent looking, but how much do we really know about the sinister side lurking just beneath the surface? Now, there is a great ferret menace that's spreading across the globe. Unprovoked ferret violence we see almost weekly in news and other media. And indeed, a recent survey of ferrets showed that 44% harbored some type of anger, be it repressed or overt. Now, sure, I can set idly to the side, but that's just not me. I felt the need, nay, I felt the duty to do something about this problem. And so what I decided to do was create an angry ferret detector that would infer the disposition of a ferret before the attack could occur. Second, it should be scalable and low maintenance. And it should be easy for the masses to use. And then finally, I wanted to put a gratuitous use of machine learning in there just, just because. You're going to need to know a little bit about SageMaker already to get the most out of this project. I can demonstrate this by pulling out the good old continuum of AWS badassery. And it starts over here as a baby, babies don't know much, and it goes all the way up to the most badass of badasses, Chuck Norris. So a baby would have zero experience with SageMaker. Maybe you know enough to create and deploy models, and this is really where you need to be to get the most out of this project. Now through this project, I'm gonna progress you along this continuum of badassery, and after this project is over, you're gonna know how to consume models and algorithms from the AWS Marketplace, as well as publish your own models and algorithms. Now, if you don't have this baseline knowledge of SageMaker, then I would really encourage you to go to our certified machine learning specialty course, specifically chapters six, seven, eight, and nine. And you can go through those chapters and that'll give you enough working knowledge about SageMaker for this project to make sense. So along those lines, we have a few prerequisites. First, you're gonna to need to know about AWS console and the CLI. You should also have some basic understanding of machine learning concepts. And as I said before, you really need to have some familiarity with using SageMaker. Now, this is a diagram that I used in my certified machine learning specialty course to explain the components of kind of the machine learning space. In the center, we have a model, and the model is what you want to provide generalizations, predictions, or analysis of the data. Now, to construct that model, we need some sort of thing that can do math for us. In this case, we're using AWS resources. We also need an algorithm. This is a formula, a math formula, or a process. Now, to feed into that algorithm, we need some data. And generally speaking, we'll have a feedback loop that we define, be it the accuracy of our model or a variety of other statistics, depending on which algorithm or 
machine learning approach you're trying to employ. First, we're going to be focusing on the algorithm. Now, there's a bunch of built-in algorithms in SageMaker, but maybe none of those algorithms are appropriate for the problem you're trying to solve. And your option there is you can go out to the marketplace to see if somebody else has created an algorithm that you can use rather than having to construct one from scratch. Now, after we look at the algorithm, we're going to look at the model and think of the model as kind of almost like a finished product. It's ready to go. And again, AWS Marketplace has models that we can use that are pre-trained in many cases that we can just deploy and start using right out of the box. To help set the context, if we look at the AWS Artificial Intelligence stack, what we're really going to be talking about here is this middle layer, this ML services. Specifically inside that ML services layer, we're going to be focusing on the marketplace today. We're going to start our project by focusing on a very simple example. We're going to be consuming an algorithm from the AWS marketplace. Now, as I said before, SageMaker has lots of built-in algorithms. And in most cases, you're probably going to be able to find an algorithm that's going to fit your need inside these. But there are certain cases where maybe you want a more polished algorithm or more focused algorithm for the business problem or the scientific problem that you're trying to figure out. And so other enterprising people have created algorithms that maybe specialize in a certain task and they've published them to AWS Marketplace for others to consume. And in some cases for others to pay to consume. Now there are some free ones and there are some paid ones as well. So we can go out to the AWS Marketplace and filter on SageMaker and it's going to provide us a list of the algorithms and models that we can consume directly into SageMaker. Well, let me just give a quick overview of the training process that SageMaker uses. Now to initiate a training process, we can either use the AWS console or the SDK. We also need data and we're gonna put data in S3. That's where SageMaker likes to get data from. And when we initiate a training job, the SageMaker SDK is going to tell SageMaker, go start that training job. SageMaker is in turn going to go look up the container that was specifically built for that algorithm. And it's going to spin it up. And then inside a Docker container, our training is going to happen. And then when our training's done, that Docker container is going to spit out our results. We call them artifacts back into S3, wherever we tell it to, to go. So here we are at the console. The first thing we're going to need to do is create an S3 bucket. And I'm just going to create a normal bucket, use all the default values. There's our bucket. Now we can head over to Amazon SageMaker. We're going to be using a Jupyter Notebook instance to use this algorithm or work with this algorithm. So let's go ahead and get that started. It usually takes a few minutes before that instance is spun up. We're going to be sure we have the proper role. And here I'm just specifying that this role can access that S3 bucket. So it created a role for us. Now if I had a GitHub repository, I could add it here and that notebook instance would be already connected to that repo. But in this case, I don't have a repo. So now while that instance is spinning up, let's go take a look at the AWS Marketplace algorithms that are available to us. So you can see on the filter here, it's pre-selected Amazon SageMaker and the algorithms option. So what we are seeing here is all the algorithms that are available to us. I have a hunch that maybe I can solve this problem using a logistic regression model. So I'm going to search for an algorithm that employs logistic regression. I found this algorithm from Intel that looks promising. So let's check it out. It is free, which is a good thing. And we can also see the usage information, any sort of support information. And ultimately, we can continue to subscribe. If we want to proceed, we're going to click Accept Offer. 
And in a few moments, it's going to be available for us to actually use. So we can go through the configuration step. And this just entails choosing which region we're going to be using it in. And then we have the product ARN. And this is going to become really important, and you'll see about that later. So there we have the Intel logistics regression algorithm that we've subscribed to. If we go back to our instance, it's ready for us. So we can open up that Jupyter Notebook instance. So now I am going to create a notebook. Let's rename it to something a little bit more meaningful. If you remember in the presentation, I was mentioning that there was a group of ferrets that were surveyed. Well, good news, I have access to that data. It just happens to be in CSV format. So I am going to upload that into my instance here. First things first, I need to set up some imports for my notebook, and I want to define the role in the session. Next, I want to read in that CSV file so we can see what it looks like. And there we go. So we have ferret ID, we have the age, sleep situation, food situation, grooming situation, living situation, and ultimately the label that we're trying to find, which is the disposition. So I need to do a little bit of manipulation to the data. I'm going to create a one hot encoding of the situation situation. <laughs> and you can see that exploded out the columns. And I'm also going to drop some fields that really aren't useful to us, like the ferret ID and the disposition nice, because really we're only after dispositions of angry. Now I'm going to save the NumPy array that we manipulated back out as CSV, and we're going to call it ferret data prepped. And then next we're going to upload it to S3, which is our bucket that we created when we first started. And there's our file. Let's define some hyperparameters for the algorithm. And now it's time to define the ARN. And we can go back to SageMaker. We can look at our algorithms and the algorithms that we're subscribed to. And we can retrieve the ARN. And I'm going to copy that ARN. I'll go back to my notebook. I'm going to assign it to this variable here. Now I can define the algorithm's estimator method, which includes stuff like job name, what sort of input data there is, what sort of instance type I want to train on. And you want to consult the documentation for the algorithm on the marketplace to decide what sort of parameters you need to pass in. With that defined, we can now issue the fit method which actually launches our training job. After a few minutes, the training job will be finished and we can go out to the training jobs in the console and see it listed there. We can drill into it and look at some details around it as well. And from here, we could create a model package or we could deploy it as a model if we wanted to. Now, as we said from the beginning, we can also make use of models or model packages as they come to us, and then we can deploy them as a model. Now, just a brief overview of how SageMaker hosting services will deploy models. First, it's going to create a model then it will create an endpoint configuration. Then it creates an endpoint. And the endpoint is the specific point that we call using the SDK, for example, to get inferences back. 
Now to create a model, we can do it either through the AWS console or the SDK, and we can use the create model method to do this. Now, most times we also specify where the model artifacts live. Remember, this is the output of the training process. And sometimes we also specify the inference container, the address, the elastic container registry address of that container. And this gets all put together and this is represented by a model. Now for AWS Marketplace, we can use a model package that has been pre-packaged by a vendor or somebody and put out there on the AWS Marketplace for us to use. Now, once we have our model, we need to create an endpoint configuration. And this just specifies the type of instance that we want to deploy to and also initial weight. And initial weight is just a way that you can have more than one instance or more than one version of that model out there. And let's say I want to do some A-B testing or something like that. I can specify a weight to go to one model and then maybe like 1% to go to another version of the model. But we're going to keep it simple here. We're just going to have one production variant for our endpoint configuration. And when we issue a create endpoint or a deploy method, then SageMaker is going to grab that endpoint configuration. It's going to go out to the container registry. It's going to spin up that Docker container for that model and then establish an endpoint that we can call. And then from our application, we could use the SageMaker API, for example, to post something into that endpoint and we'll get back a response. Maybe it's in JSON or something like that. So that's how real-time inferences work. Now for batch transforms, it's much the same, but we're not actually creating an endpoint. We're just spinning up provisioned ML instances to do the batch activities for us. And those provisioned instances get their data from S3. And when it's done doing whatever it's doing, it's going to write the results back to an S3 bucket that we tell it to write to. Let's take a look at what this looks like in practice. Okay, after playing around with the logistics regression model for a bit, I didn't really like it. I wasn't really pleased with it because it was based on survey data. So how often are you going to approach a potentially angry ferret and say, excuse me, Mr. Ferret, how is your living condition? How's your eating habits? Unlikely, very unlikely. So I really wanted to explore a model where we could maybe just snap a photo of the potentially offending ferret and determine from the photo if it's angry or not. So that led me down this path of image classification. So let's go see if we can find an image classification model in the marketplace that we can use. So we can go to model packages and then we click on the AWS Marketplace tab. Click the button that says find model packages. And we're going to be taken to the marketplace where it's pre-selected Amazon SageMaker and model packages. So here we can search for image feature, which will return a list of image classification models. And the first one on the list is this one here that was created by AWS. It uses glue on CV mobile net as a classifier. And we can go into the details and you can see that there's no charge for using this. We can see usage instructions, any sort of support information. Then if we're satisfied, we can continue to subscribe. It's gonna give us some more information. We're gonna confirm that subscription. And then we can continue to the configuration step. Now this model doesn't have many things that we can choose. We can choose the region that we want to use it in. Some other model packages may have more elaborate configuration steps. Now from here, we can go back to SageMaker and we can see this item here in our model package list. We could click it and we could deploy an endpoint right from here, but instead we're gonna be using the SDK to deploy this endpoint. To do that, I go back over to my notebook instance. I'm gonna create a new notebook, give it a meaningful name, and then just like I did in my other notebook, I'm going to define some imports and the execution role as well as a SageMaker session. And I'm going to also define the model ARN. 
And I get that just by going back to the model package listing and copy that ARN. Now I can define the model package and deploy. And it's as easy as that. It's going to take a little while to deploy. So in the meantime, I'm going to upload a test image that I procured. And how do you know that the deployment is done? Well, you look for this little exclamation point at the end. That tells you that the model is completely deployed. We can go back to SageMaker and see that we now have a model. We have an endpoint configuration, and we have a deployed endpoint. We can drill into this endpoint and see the URL if we wanted to use an API to access this model. Now back in the notebook instance, I'm going to define that file name, that test file. And we can see it here. He looks like an angry guy. Now in this snippet of code, I am going to read in that file and convert it into a byte array. I'm using the Boto3 SDK, and I'm going to define the client to be SageMaker Runtime. And I can use the method invoke endpoint, passing in the endpoint name and the payload and the content type. And that's going to invoke that model for me. And finally, I'm going to parse the JSON response that I get back from the model and print out the results. So let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so it came back with the top five classes of the image that we sent in. Polecat, Fitch, Black-Footed Ferret, Weasel, Frying Pan, Crockpot. Hmm, this doesn't really tell me anything about whether the, the ferret is angry or not. It's kind of marginally good at saying whether it's a ferret or not. Not really sure this is the model that I want to go with. So what we can do now is... Go back and be sure to delete the endpoint because that's the thing that incurs cost. I'm also going to delete the endpoint configuration. You don't have to do this, but I just like to maintain a clean workspace. And I'm also going to delete the model that was created. And because it seems that neither the model package or the algorithm that we subscribe to through the marketplace is going to fit our needs, we might as well go and unsubscribe or cancel our subscription to those services. And we're back at square one. I think to solve this problem, I'm going to need to create my own model. In the next walkthrough, I'm going to show you how I submitted the model that I created to the marketplace. But if you're interested in how I created the model in the first place, there's a bonus segment at the very end of this video. In this walkthrough, we are going to step through the process of submitting a model, a custom model, to the AWS marketplace. And we'll also show how to take it down or remove it. Let's say that we didn't want to publish it or we made a mistake or something like that. Now, there's a few things to keep in mind if you're publishing a model, if you want to publish a model to the AWS marketplace. First, as of right now, you can only do this in US East 2. So you need to create your model, just somehow get your model over into US East 2. Second, you're going to go through the process of building a Docker container that you're going to upload to your ECR repository. And this isn't a tutorial on Docker, but if you want to look at that process a little bit closer, then you can take a look at the bonus material at the end of this lecture, where I'll walk you through how I built my own custom model. Something else you're going to have to know is your model needs to perform batch inferences. And the reason for this is part of the submission process or making it valid to be able to be submitted to the marketplace is that it has to go through a validation step. And this validation step is, in essence, batch transformation. 
So that's one of the mistakes that I made. I originally set up a model that was just doing real-time inference and I had no accommodation for batch. And so I had to go back and add the ability for that model to do batch inferences. Additionally, you need to be sure that your model is self-contained, meaning that it doesn't need any sort of runtime libraries or to download anything off the public internet. Because in that validation process, it gets stood up in an environment where it's isolated. It doesn't have access to the internet. I know sometimes uh, PIP tries to dynamically install some stuff or maybe some frameworks download pre-trained models from their website, for example. That won't work if you need to do that. That won't work through that validation step. So what you're going to have to do is stage all that stuff locally in the container and you should be okay. So for starters, we're gonna to need to create a place out on S3 where we're gonna put some test data, some validation data. And I've already done that. I've created a folder underneath my S3 bucket and I've uploaded four images. So I'm gonna open up my training job just in another tab because I'm gonna to need to reference the stuff that's in that training job, mainly the container path as well as the artifact path. So I can go out to model packages. I can create a model package. I'm going to call this angry ferrets. Version one. Give it a description. And I already know my paths to the ECR container as well as the model artifacts. So here is the path to the image. And this is in my own personal repo. Now that does not have to be public. AWS will take a snapshot of that and then put it in a separate location so that the public can access it. And I need to provide the path to my model.tar.gz. And here I'm specifying what are the allowable instance types that I will support for real time and batch inference. And I'll just select them all because this model runs on anything. Now I also have to specify the content type. Now my content type here for input is going to be JPEGs and my output content type is going to be JSON. Now here's where we can specify whether or not we want to validate this for inclusion into the AWS Marketplace. Now I've experimented around with this. If you select no here, then you're not going to be able to reference this or, or point to this ARN once it's created when you're actually submitting to the Marketplace. So what I've found is that you have to specify yes here. Uh, I haven't found a way to do it after the fact. So if you specify yes here, then it will be available so that you can use the ARN for the end result model package in the marketplace submission. And for some reason I have to specify the role, I had to do the drop down there. Now here's the validation profile. And in here we're going to specify the location of our testing files. And this is just the path to those four files that I showed you. We're going to specify the content type as image JPEG. And we're going to specify the output path. And we're going to start the validation process. And it's going to run for a few minutes. We're going to just fast forward through this. And I'll show you what it looks like when we get back. And now we're finished. You can see the job is completed. everything looks good. Now we can go out to S3 and if you remember we had that output path. Well what that does is it just outputs as in this case .out. These are just text files in this case it's a JSON and they look like this. The same exact output that we were seeing when we were doing inferences in real time. So now we have our model package that is eligible to be submitted 
to the marketplace. To do that, we can go over to the marketplace. We can click on sell in on the AWS marketplace and go to ML products. And right now we don't have any listings. Now in advance of this tutorial, I've already set myself up as a seller. And it's a pretty simple process. You just go to the marketplace, sell on AWS, and then there's a, uh, a link there where you can sign up as a seller. Now, if you intend on selling this for money, then the sign up process is a little bit more involved because you have to enter some financial information, some bank account information, and most likely some tax agency information. So in my case, I'm not selling this product, so I didn't have to go through all that stuff. It was a pretty simple process. So I'm already set up as a seller, and so these options are now available to me. I can publish my model out on the ML marketplace. So the process is pretty simple. It's just a little wizard here. I'm gonna start the process. I'm gonna call it the angry ferret detector. Give it some short description. I hate when people watch me type. I'm gonna classify it as an image classification. Go on to the next step. Now I can choose a logo. I'm all about the logos. Enter some support information here. Am I going to support it? No, I'm not going to support it. Do I want to run it in all regions? Yeah, sure. Why not? And that's that. Now I specify the ARN for the model that I validated. And here it is. Click add. And that takes me to the next screen where I can enter the version, a public facing version number, and maybe some general information. In this case, I'm gonna put in some information about what you need to send in the model and what the model is going to return to you. It's going to ask us to verify and it's going to ask us, do we have any recommended instance types here? Not really. I'm just going to select one. Now it's time to enter our pricing and terms. And for this, I'm not gonna charge anything, I'm just doing it out of the kindness of my heart. And we do have to enter a EULA. So once I've set up all that stuff, we are ready to submit it for publishing. And so now what's going on behind the scenes is because I specified in all regions, it's copying that image and all the, the material out to all the different regions. And after a while, it's gonna come back and give us the next step in the process, and we'll see that momentarily. Okay, so it's been a little while, and we've moved on to the next step. In real time, I think it took maybe about 30 minutes or so. Now we can go look at our marketplace entry in kind of a staging mode, only we can see it right now. And so we can click on that link. This is how it's going to look out there in the marketplace. I can review everything to make sure it looks nice. Now, if I like everything, I can sign off and publish. So our product is almost live. We've finished the, the sign off step. That's just kind of like the final QA check. Now we're in a published draft status. And eventually we're going to get to a published status. So as you can see here, we're fully published. We can go out to the marketplace and see our entry. This means also that everybody else using the marketplace can see our entry. They can consume the model. They can deploy it on their own. And in fact, if we go out to the marketplace through the console, for example, I can search for ferrets. And there's my angry ferret detector.
Okay, um, I think I may have underestimated the veracity of the uh, ferret community. Um, as soon as I published the angry ferret detector, um, they started organizing. And there's at least two or three of them out there right now, and they don't seem happy at all. Um, I, I think I don't have any other option but to take down the model. So uh, hopefully they're going to go away soon. They'll get distracted and want to wreak havoc someplace else. Um, and I'll take the model down just as soon as I can. Uh, so hopefully you'll hear back from me pretty soon. Hopefully I can get through this. Um, I'll, I'll see you later, maybe. So as you've heard, things didn't quite go very well within the ferret community. And so I'm being forced to unpublish this model. Something about an evasion of privacy or something, I don't know. But anyway, we're going to unpublish the model. So we go back out to our ML listings. And one of the options we have for the action is unpublish. And we have to specify some reason why we want to unpublish it and then some contact information. Not exactly sure why they need this reason information, but maybe it has something to do with communicating to either existing or future customers. And as you can see here, any new customers won't be able to see this listing because it'll just be unavailable. But anybody who has already subscribed to it will still be able to use it. And I can specify my email address here in case there are problems or they need to get in touch with me. And our unpublished request has been submitted. And you can see under the open requests we've submitted for unpublishing. And there's a similar workflow that happens there. Now it does appear to take some time before the model gets removed from being a listing in the marketplace. And I'm not entirely sure if this is just um, a manual process still, or if it just takes a little while to remove it from all those regions. But that's how you would publish a model and then ultimately take it back or take it down if you didn't want it public out there anymore. This lesson contains some bonus material that I wanted to include because when I was trying to go through this, frankly, there was not any real good documentation that I found that would help me do what I was trying to do. So I figured I'd record how I got to build my model and maybe it's gonna be useful for somebody else out there. So if you recall, what we're really trying to do here is a binary classification. It's an image binary classifier. So I experimented with a lot of different models based on TensorFlow or MXNet, and I settled on using something that's very similar to a tutorial out there by FastAI regarding image classification. And so what I chose is use the PyTorch framework and FastAI to build my model. Now you can build any model you want, any way you want, as you probably have figured out there's dozens and dozens of way to, ways to build any particular machine learning model. But this is just how I did it. Uh, maybe there's a better way. Um, most surely there probably is a better way, but this is just my journey. So for starters, we're going to go out to SageMaker and we're gonna start a notebook instance. That takes some time, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that underway. Just gonna call it Angry Ferrets. And I'm gonna change the machine type. Because I'm kind of impatient, I want a GPU instance here. Now, a, a CPU instance works just fine, but a GPU instance is faster. I'm also gonna increase the uh, disk space allowed. And I've already set up my GitHub repo so that when this instance spins up, it's already gonna be connected to that repo, which will save us some time. Next, I need to go out to S3, and I need to create a bucket that we can store our data into. We're just going to leave it default for now. 
Now, it is important that your SageMaker execution role has access to this bucket, and in, in this case, mine does. So now our instance notebook is up and running. We're going to log into this thing. And you can see it's already cloned my repository from my GitHub repo that I set up. I'm going to go under own model, and then we first need to generate some data. There's not a whole lot of ground truth data on ferrets, especially angry ferrets. So I had to cheat a little bit. What I did is I found eight photos of each that I thought represented nice ferrets in this case. These are all nice ferrets. And then I also found photos of what I would classify as angry ferrets. And generally speaking, they're just the ones that are showing their teeth. And so you can see I, these are my angry ferrets. These are my ground truth that I'm starting with. So to have a good training process, we're going to need more images than just eight of each class. And so we can use a trick called augmentation. And I'm using a library here called Augmenter. You can also do this using Keras. And some other frameworks have this built in, where we can iterate through the eight images that we have and then impart some random manipulation, maybe tilting them a little bit, zooming in, um, resizing them slightly. And to a machine learning process, it looks like a brand new photograph or a brand new image. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're taking those eight, we're generating a thousand images for a training set. And then we're also generating 200 images for a validation set. And finally, we want to copy these images out to our S3 bucket so they're there such that our SageMaker processes can reach them. Okay, the data augmentation process is over. We can go out to the local directory here. And as you can see, as we pull up some of these pictures, they're all slightly different. But to a machine learning process, they might as well be brand new images. They're still going to help us train the model on what to look for when you're trying to detect whether a ferret is angry or nice. Now that we have our data, we can move our attention to actually building the model. So in this notebook, it starts out very simple. I just do some imports here, and then we define some parameters. So here we're gonna take a look at our inference and training code. And again, it's heavily influenced by the fast AI example that I found. Now you'll see in the training function, I do download a pre-trained model. Uh, in this case, I'm using ResNet 50. And that's because I'm going to train this model before I publish it to the marketplace. And my intent here is I just want an inference model only. So I can train the model myself using pre-trained models but just so long as when it comes time to do inferences, as long as there's nothing being downloaded, then that's good. And if you, if you look closely in the section for prediction, or rather model instantiation, then you'll see that I specifically tell the framework not to download a pre-trained model. The next step for us is to build a container. Now, here is the Docker file that we're going to be using to build our container. And quite simply, we're just using one of the public images, the public PyTorch GPU Python 3 images that are freely available out there from Amazon. We're using that as a starting point. And then I've also included the FastAI framework, specifically 1.0.54, because the one that's built into the PyTorch 1.1 container that Amazon has is, is kind of old. I also include some other PyTorch stuff and Torch Vision just to make sure that I'm up to the proper current levels that I want to be. And you also notice that I'm copying from my local drive here, I'm copying that ferret.py, that inference code, to a special location inside the container, that being the optml code path. And down below, you see that I've specified the program to launch when this container gets launched. It's called the ferret.py. That's that um, inference code and training code that I created. 
So I've also included a shell script here. For starters, it builds a name, a string for our full name of our container. And you pass this in, you pass the name of the container in as a command line parameter. Additionally, it will create a repository for us if one doesn't exist in our Elastic Container Registry. And it also authenticates us into Amazon's container registry such that we can pull that PyTorch Docker image. And this is an important component because I was trying in vain to pull that image from the repo, but I wasn't authenticating into that repo. So this is really important. So ultimately this script will build the Docker image, it will tag it, and then it will push it to our own personal ECR repo. To run this script, chances are if you cloned it from my repo, you're going to have to give that particular script executable rights. Or you can just use a bash command line. Now it's going to be pulling down the original image. Then you'll see as we go through the setup process, that we're going to upgrade pip and we're going to install fastai 1.0.54. And we're just going to speed through this process because it's kind of boring. Ultimately, when our container is ready, it's going to be pushed to our own personal repository. And at the end of this script, it's going to spit out the path to that image, which we'll need later. Now we're ready to do some training. So we can specify some parameters here. Notice that we're using local underscore GPU as the instance type, and that's a reserved word or reserved instance type that we can use to have the estimator train locally, meaning that we're going to use a local Docker container to do the training. We do need to do a little bit here with Docker to be sure the networking is properly set up. And you'll notice in the estimator here, we are using the image name of angry ferret colon latest. And because we're using angry ferret colon latest, it's going to look at the local versions of containers. And sure enough, we have an angry ferret latest container locally. And that's what it's going to do. Now, you probably want to do this because when you're troubleshooting your container, it takes a long time for SageMaker to stand up the machines and download all the data and so forth. So if you're able to do it locally, you can iterate through much faster and that just helps in debugging. So that's exactly what we're doing. I just kicked off the process and you can see it launches the container and goes right into the training process. And we can see it using the GPU instance. If we look at the NVIDIA SMI utility, and I just set this up as a watch and you can see the percentage utilization of the GPU will pop up to 96% or so and then drop back down. And that's our GPU being used for this training process. And again, this is kind of boring. I think we have four iterations here. We're going to fast forward through this and you'll see what the output looks like at the end. And because we're using a pre-trained model, the accuracy is really good. Plus, not to mention, our data isn't the greatest either, but this is just for illustration purposes. So we've managed to train them the model, and we're ready to do some inferences. So we can deploy the estimator, and it's the same process. It's going to launch a Docker container and then sit there and wait for us to access it. So let's try some inferences here. I have a picture here of our test. Looks like an angry ferret. Let's see what the response is. And it says it's nice. Well, maybe. Do we really know ferrets? They're very deceptive. One thing you'll notice in doing this locally is it takes a bit of time. In practice, when we deploy on SageMaker, it's instantaneous. Now 
Now that is an angry ferret if I've ever saw one. Let's see what our model predicts. And it says it's angry. It's 99.7% sure that that's an angry ferret. Hooray, the model worked. Ship it. Let's try a nice one. This very well could be an angry ferret. Again, a lot of ferrets have repressed anger. You never can tell. Now, when we're done testing, we want to be sure to delete our local endpoint. Really, all that's going to do is just shut down our Docker container that's running locally. It shuts it down gracefully. And if we look at the Docker processes, you can see that there's nothing running right now. All right, so we've proven out our model. We've trained it locally. We've tested it locally. It seems to be working okay. Now it's time to move this whole ordeal over to SageMaker. And that's really easy. It's very similar to what we've already done. Now, if you recall, when we had our ECR path back when we ran that script, this is where we put the ECR path. I've specified a variable here where I can store that. And I've just launched the estimator process, which is going to deploy our model to SageMaker and get the training process underway. This takes quite a while, so we're just going to fast forward through this. You can see with the output here, it's just the same as if we were training locally. And our accuracy is pretty good. Now, if we want to look at this in the console, we can go out to the console and we can see that our training job there, it's completed. And one of the things that SageMaker does once it completes a training job is it'll write the model artifacts out to S3. And we can specify the path or it just uses a default path in S3. It creates a special bucket in S3 where it drops these things off. If we go over to S3, there's that special bucket I was telling you about. We can go into that folder under model, output rather, and we have model.tar.gz. And th those are the artifacts. That's the output of the training process that we're going to use to do inferences. So when we're dealing with the SDK, we can just deploy from the estimator that was created already, it already knows all the details that it needs. And this takes a while too. What we're looking for here is it's going to end with an exclamation point. That means everything was deployed successfully. If it's anything else, then you probably have an error and you may have to look at CloudWatch to try to figure out what was going on. So if we go back to the console over to endpoints, you can now see that we have an endpoint that's been deployed. And it has a URL that we can use and a, a name. And we can just make use of this using the SDK if we wanted to. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to pass in one of our images. And you can see it returns really quickly. Clearly an angry ferret. And fortunately, our model identifies that as an angry ferret. See what it says about the uh, pseudo angry ferret or pseudo nice. Now it says it's angry, so I think that's fair. We need to trust technology. Do definitely be sure to delete your endpoints when you're done playing with them because running endpoints incurs costs. So when you're done, be sure to delete those endpoints. And so that is how I created the model that I'm going to deploy to AWS Marketplace. If you're enjoying this series and have an interest to learn more about machine learning, do be sure to check out our new course for the AWS Certified Machine Learning Specialty. Brock and I break things down with plain speak, plenty of examples, and some killer labs to help you become the SageMaker savant you have always dreamed.